Hello everybody, uh, my name is Brian Locke and welcome to Maker Monday, I think I call it, or is it Making Monday? Probably should learn that. Um, hello to everybody in the chat, feel free to say hi. Um, yeah, hey to uh, Climber Hunt, who's Dave Hunt, you can check him out on DaveHunt.ie. Hey I Giggles and hey Mike, hey Sophie, uh, how's it going? Um, yeah, so a different kind of a stream today. Uh, good timing, Sophie. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned uh, last week, um, I was going to the Hackaday Unconference on um, on Saturday. So that was two days ago now. Um, it was a really fun day. Um, but I uh, met um, our Sophie gave a presentation at it about her. ESP8266 blimp project and she was saying that she uh, wanted a hand with the coding part of it because uh, she's pretty new to coding so uh, I said that I'd take a look so um, that's what we're going to do on the stream today so let's first take a quick look at Sophie's project or where you can find out more about it and I'll throw it in the chat as well um so thanks for joining everybody um okay screen share probably should have checked that that was working but that is perfect uh yeah so uh hopefully you can all hear me okay um hey peter how's it going um yeah so this is sophie's project here um you can f see more of it uh on this link here, or you can follow her on Twitter. Uh, Sophie, feel free to post your Twitter handle in the chat if you'd like. I'm sure it's on this page somewhere, but um, yeah, so basically she is making a, a type of a drone, but it's going to have a helium balloon attached to it, and it's controlled with an ESP8266. And it also has uh, another ESP8266 as the controller for it and at the moment Sophie's seeing a delay of like a, even a couple of seconds I think you were saying on Saturday uh, between you know pressing a button on the controller and it impacting on the actual drone so um, yeah we're gonna see if we can uh, bring that down a small bit four to five seconds yeah so we'll <laughs> We're definitely hoping we can improve that anyways, uh, Sophie. So um, yeah, so I brought in the files uh, for this are, are on the project here under files. Um, so I just grabbed the two of these that were updated today. So thanks for that, Sophie. Um, so what I was thinking about was that we'd start with the, the client. So um, yesterday evening I had a really quick look at this and I was doing some testing with the client and I saw that it wasn't it, it was sending um, it was only going through the loop like maybe once every two seconds or so which obviously is not ideal uh, because like Sophie is trying to just send data as, as fast as possible it's not waiting on an event or anything she's sending the foot like the current status of the switches uh, as many times as she can which is a good idea for this um for this type of a project where you just want to you know control something so um yeah a couple of things that uh i was thinking that we could improve so um one of the things was, uh, and uh, Sophie mentioned this on Saturday as well, is that the serial prints uh, would slow it down. So it'd be interesting to see how much they slow it down. So if we um, if we comment them out. Um, so what I did to test how fast or slow it was, was basically I let it run through the loop for 30... Well, I actually did a minute, but I'm going to reduce it to 30 seconds for this. Um run through the loop and increment a counter every time it does this client.connect for up to 30 seconds. And then when the 30 seconds is finished, just serial print out how many times it actually ran through the ran through the loop. So I, you know, I did a 60 seconds yesterday and I only got 31, which is, you know, pretty slow. That means it only sent its state to the server 
31 times in that minute, which is um, uh, yeah, pretty slow, which we don't want. Uh, a couple of other things that I thought might be uh, a way of improving it, just from a quick look, and I'm super happy to take suggestions on any of these two. Um, one was that I thought that we could, at the moment, the values are being sent as a byte uh, each, but there is only six values to send. So I was thinking that we could um, use a bit set for each um for each control. So there's a control for positive to the up down motor or negative to the up down motor, positive to the left motor, negative to the left motor, or positive to the right motor, or negative to the left or to the right motor. So there's only six potential inputs. So I was thinking that we could bit set one byte. So that means, you know, we're going to binary set the, the least significant digit if this U6 up is pressed. Um, set the second least significant digit if U6 is so that would reduce the payload which you know it mightn't be a huge difference but it would be interesting to see how much of a difference it makes so instead of sending like seven different values over the client we're going to send just one and uh, the server will be able to parse out the same information and then another thing that I think would make a difference, and it'll be interesting to see if it does, is um, I'm pretty sure that a standard client um, client connection like this uses um, UDP or sorry TCP. Um, so I'm not exactly a, an expert on networks now, but um, TCP has kind of like a handshake. So uh, the client is like, hey, server, I'm going to connect to you and I'm going to send you something. And the server comes back, yeah, that's fine. And then the client goes, okay, here's the data. And the server goes, yep, yeah, cool, I got that. But what you can use instead for this kind of an application uh, is something called UDP. And that's more like fire and forget. So instead of like this handshake, it's literally, I'm just throwing that out there. And if the server gets it, it gets it. If it doesn't, too bad I'll hopefully it gets the next one so yeah I, I so what I want to do first is we'll put in a benchmark here for the client and um, you can see I have a few different boards here I don't have any actual uh, blimps but that's okay and um, I've three different uh, ESP8266 boards here so I was thinking if we get to it what we could do is we could have one uh, board be kind of like the the gatekeeper between the two of them so you know, set a flag on one of the boards to say, like, ha have have uh, both boards connected to this one board, which we'll call the gatekeeper, the client and the server. So on the client, set a flag on the gatekeeper to say, hey, I've, you know, I'm sending this data over now. And then when the server receives it, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish I had a blimp. We'll, we'll get one at some stage. Um, and then when the server receives it, set another pin high on the gatekeeper and then, you know, read off the gatekeeper, basically, what was the time difference between one sending and the other receiving. Um, but I think for the moment, what I was doing just with the, um, just counting how many times the loop gets executed uh, on the client is is an okay solution to because I know for sure we need to get that number way up if we want um, if we want the performance to improve at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, if we can improve something, maybe maybe we can talk about it then. Uh, I talk a good game, but let's see that we actually get any improvements. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, take you off screen while I. Uh, <laughs> put my SSID and password in um, or yeah I'll, I'll just do a secret secret.h is my normal style of things uh, just uh, although I did reveal it on a, a previous stream we may as well uh, try not to do it as much as possible so you can just have a nice look at my desk while I do this um, uh, yeah I uh, I was inspired as well, just to get back to your earlier comment, um, Dave, uh, who's Climber Hunt in the chat, in case people are wondering, um, 
Uh, I was also inspired yesterday. I finished a video that I was working on just to get it out the door. Um, but yeah, I was I was really tired actually. It was it was about kind of twelve o'clock when I got home, maybe twenty past twelve, and I was just beat. Um, yeah, I I find it hard to like. I sorry, not hard. I find it very tiring to concentrate for that amount of time, and like the talks were uh, super interesting as well. So like you didn't want to just be kind of dozing off or whatever. Um, yeah, did you, you parked in a park and ride or something, Dave? Did you? And did I overhear you saying you were getting a dart or something? I I ended up parking in Temple Bar because I didn't know <laughs> where else to park. No, I, I prepaid for parking and it was like, uh, it wasn't too bad actually. It was only like 13 euro in a place called Fleet or Fleet Street Car Park, um, which I thought was pretty good. I was expecting it to be a lot more. Um, okay, so let's do some hash define. SSID, don't call out the rest of it. <laughs> And uh, it was a super small world as well. Um, Dave and me both worked for the same company about six years ago. And it's a tiny company. It was, like it was maybe 10 people at the time, maybe 15 or something. It was uh, kind of a, a strange coincidence. Uh, just um, when I saw him go up on stage, I was like, ah, I remember him. Um, type slowly um, yeah I ended up dropping a friend of mine home to um, to uh, Nace as well so it was a bit of a detour back to Athlone but uh, it wasn't too bad okay so I have uh, made my secret dot H that hopefully will not appear because that's happened <laughs> on streams too um, Okay, secret H. That should cover us for that. And now, oh, I'm gonna need to take you away because I forget what I called my uh, properties or my hash defines. And cool I'm actually gonna to need to do the same with the server as well because um, it's going to fail to connect if I don't program one as the server so let's do that yeah that that was actually another thing as well that the connection um, restarting the connection every time is probably um, not ideal uh, yeah that would be a good idea too I I thought of it yesterday, but I forgot about it today, so thank you for the suggestion. Um, okay, I'm gonna power this Node MCU board as my server, so let's load up the server code. I'm gonna need to do the same with the secret.h. I know I'm currently showing you my screen, but I'll uh, get rid of that before I uh, do too much damage. Um, oh, my daughter is awake. Pretty sure my wife is still here. <laughs> um, but, uh, we may need to attend to that if she's not. Let's see how it goes. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So I, I uh, Sophie has set the server to be um, a static IP address two one eight. I doubt I've anything on my. Uh, uh, I doubt I've entered on my network that's 218, so let's uh, go with that. Um, let's put it in. I forgot what it was called. Oh, perfect. <laughs> all that, all that uh, stuff hiding it, and then I just show it to you anyways. But it was really quick, so nobody saw. Also, I live in the middle of nowhere, so nobody's going to see anyways. I just try to avoid it if possible. Um, okay. Alright, so let's upload this. Do I have my board plugged in? Port. 
no, I don't have my board plugged in. So let's plug that in and connect the port. Not yet. Come four. Okay, perfect. And let's go. Yep. Um, yeah, I was just uh, just making sure I didn't have anything on my network that was the same as that. So, you know, if uh, you could have a clash if you have uh, Wi-Fi is not clear. Oh, I don't I haven't included the, the header file. Oops. Um, yeah, I, I could have a clash if I had something else on my network that was 218, but my network assigns low numbers as the DHCP, and I, I don't have anything uh, statically assigned that's 218, I don't think. Uh... Uh, hey, Neskimo. Um, I don't no, actually, I haven't really looked into it too much. I haven't had a whole lot of need to do performance testing on um, on Arduino up to this. Like, it's always been sort of small things that didn't it didn't really matter. Kind of how fast they were. If it took half a second or a second, it was fine. Um, Uh, your one will have uh, the server in this scenario will have a static IP address when it's uploaded. It'll be that two one eight one, and then uh, I guess the client just gets whatever one it gets. It it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, yeah, and we can do some. Actually, while we're waiting for that to compile, let's uh let's look after the client to do some counting. So uh, I'm not going to make any changes to the code at the moment, and we'll just take a baseline to where we are. So I'm just going to add a couple more um, variables. So I'm just going to do uh, int, and we're going to call it just count. And that'll default to 0. Let's do an unsigned uh, long, and that will be our um, 30 second timer and we'll leave that be nothing at the moment um, do I need anything else I don't think so I think that's probably all we need um, so then what I'm going to do in the loop is I'm going to do if oh actually I want to do this here too uh, so in the bottom of the setup, I'm going to make a 30 second timer equal to millis, which is the amount of milliseconds that the um, that the ESP8266 or the Arduino board has been running. Um, so millis plus uh, 30 thousand. So that should be. So when we're finished the setup, just so like connecting to my Wi-Fi or setting up the pins doesn't impact on our test at all. So when we're finished in the setup, take what millis is and add 30,000 milliseconds to it, which is 30 seconds. And uh, that's, <laughs> I should learn how to spell. Um, and that'll be when we want it to stop. So what we're gonna do then in here is if millis, now this, I guess millis will, slow down our our loop a tiny bit but it should be like literally you know a, a clock tick or something so it, it should be fine shouldn't impact so uh if millis is less than oh yeah there was one more i wanted to add so it doesn't print the whole time um if millis is less than that let's grab this stuff here um yeah, I think uh, when we move the client connect, um, the server at the moment is um, the server at the moment is uh, disconnecting at the end of every loop. So I don't know whether we need to stop the server doing that. Um, the this. Uh, the the client doesn't have a static IP address. It just gets one from the the Wi-Fi, I guess. Um, but the server does have one. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, so it, it should be the same as this one here. Um, so that should be good. Okay, and there was one last thing I wanted to do was uh, Google show account, and that will default to false, which is fine. And then I want to do after this milli. So if we get past that, that if statement, it means we're past the 30 second mark. Um, uh, yeah, if it's past the 30 second mark, we're going to get in here. So we're just going to say if else if show count. Uh, first thing I'll do is make show count equal to. Oh, sorry, I did this the wrong way around. Uh, false, I should be making this equal to true. Um, uh, I need my semicolon, and uh, I did this last night when I was testing it too. I forgot to increment count. Uh, so that's just literally every time before client.connect happens, or basically every time it goes into the loop when we want it to count, I'm just incrementing this number so we can see how many times it's called. And then show count is equal to false, and I'm just gonna serial print. Uh, let's do serial print uh, count. Yeah, uh, another thing, if we don't make enough improvements to it, another thing that I thought might be potentially interesting is um, I wonder whether a direct connection between the two would be faster in terms of make one of them be uh, like a, its own Wi-Fi network rather than connecting to the router, especially if you're in an area that has poor enough Wi-Fi signal. Like I'm right underneath my router, so this would be as good of a test as it can be for a router. But um, yeah, using the router mode. But yeah, that might be interesting as well uh, to gain some more. Time. So let's. Uh, I have the server should be up and running now. Let's uh, take a look at that. Uh, I'll just hit the reset button. Um, hello. And it has a Wi Fi MAC address. Okay. You can all see my. Uh, MAC address, I'm not worried about that. Did I program this wrong? Server. There's hello. It has its dots. Oh, it hasn't gotten any connections. So yeah, that's probably fine. Um, so I'm going to switch that over from... Uh, um, I'm going to switch that stuff or sorry, I'm going to switch this board uh, over to just be a regular power supply now, rather than being plugged into my computer. So he's programmed and should be good to go. So let's plug into the Wemos D1 Mini. Um, maybe I can make that a small bit bigger as well, actually. Um, yeah, so uh, we've programmed the Node MCU board as the server, and now let's program the Wemos as the client. Where are we? Client. Yep. Uh, tools. We got a correct port number. Let me just take a quick check in the chat. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just. It, like it might be not only would it be potentially faster it might be more flexible in terms of like if you wanted to bring this uh, i know you said it, you couldn't bring it outside but if you wanted to bring it somewhere rather than having to either put wi-fi manager on the two uh, boards to dynamically configure um the ssids or even to reprogram them like you'd just be able to set it up it wouldn't have access to the internet but it, it it doesn't need it for this sort of stuff i would say um so yeah uh it might be another solution but i i think this way should be fine too i, I don't see any problems with it we'll just get the break uh or we'll just get the details and we'll see 
Twitch says the stream is unstable, but I don't see any dropped frames in OBS. So if you could uh, let me know how it's coming through or whatever. We had, a, we had a lot of internet problems last Monday, which was unfortunate, but um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we've better luck this time around. Um, yes, so that's uploading here. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so that's uploaded. So let's take a look at our serial monitor. So you can see here it's printing out stuff. And you can even see there, like, how uh, slow it is. It's a bit flaky. Hmm, that is a pity. Yeah, it's funny. I oh, encoder overloaded. Turn down video settings or use a faster video encoder preset. Hmm, the Spectre patch or something. Uh, my uh, computer doesn't seem to be able to uh, stream as good as it used to. So we only got thirteen true there. Um, if if it becomes a problem, uh, we'll try change the settings and see how it goes. Um. So we got 13 through there, which is, so that's 13 for 30 seconds. So for a minute, we only sent 26, which is less than two a second, which is uh, not good. So let's, uh, uh, yeah, so let's, um, let's comment out the serial prints. I'm curious, it's, it's a nice quick change that, and I'm curious to see uh, what uh, difference it makes. Yeah, it seems to not be my internet. It seems to be my... Oh, video has stopped. Uh, the stream health is back to good in uh, Twitch again. I think it might be just when I'm actually programming the boards that it gets a bit hairy, but... um. So I've just commented out the serial prints and we'll see what kind of, I, pro I probably should have ran it more than once because I got a slightly different result when I ran it last night so um, yeah but it doesn't really matter let's uh, see how it goes yes my encoder is overloaded can I change video Okay, uh, video is good. I'm not sure if it is when I click the compile button. Um, maybe I might just, I will see how it goes. <laughs> if, it, if, it, if I get that message about it overloaded again, I'm just gonna stop the stream and change the, um, yeah, I might just do that now actually. So I'm just gonna stop the stream for literally 10 seconds and drop down the frame rate a small bit because it's at 48 fps which is fairly high like it's probably twice as high as it needs to be um so just uh two seconds okay um hopefully that is better now we'll see my cpu usage is lower but we'll see what happens um Ooh, so we, oops, we gained two, which uh, I guess is not insignificant. It's not super significant, but uh, not insignificant. Um, yeah, so let's see what else we can do. So, uh, oh, this is the server. Let's go back to the client. Um, yeah, I looks good now. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna need to make a change actually to the server. Uh, if we want to um, client flush. If client is connected, we want to flush and then read string. I'm not a hundred percent sure what flush does, and then. I definitely see we've client stop here as well. 
which we probably don't want. Um, take the flush out. What does it do, uh, Sophie? I'm not 100% sure. Um, flush messes things up. Okay, well, that's a good enough reason to remove it, I would say. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get rid of the client stop as well. And I am going to, there is a if client is connected or not, it clears the stream. Okay, cool. Is this not the current? I thought I pulled it down, but I could have opened the one I pulled down yesterday. I'm not sure. Uh, Arduino clients. Pull that in over here. Yeah, so I'm gonna use this here. So I'm gonna check, is it connected? And if it is, if it isn't connected, then I will connect to it, but all the other times I'll just stay up. Um, okay, cool. Um, so that sh we'll see how that goes. Um, I need to upload that to the server. Let's do that. So we've now we're taking out the flush and we're taking out the client stop on the server. Um, let's upload that code. Let's upload that code when we don't get a Java error. Encoding overloaded again. Hmm. That is weird. I think I need to either get a better CPU or overclock this CPU. I think I've room to overclock this one, so I probably will overclock it. Hey, Suri Yariel one. How's it going? Uh, we are working on a blimp project. I know it doesn't look like a blimp project, but trust me, it is. So uh, Sophie, who's in the chat there, is um, is working on a is a is working on a remote control blimp using an ESP8266, and she is having some big delays between the controller and the and the object, the the blimp, um, basically. And what we're trying to do is to lower the latency between the two as much as possible. So currently, uh, Sophie is seeing like a delay of uh, three to five seconds or something like that. So we want to get that way down. Like it should be, it sh shouldn't be any worse than half a second or it's not usable, I would say. And even that would be pretty high, I think. So let's see what we can do. So that, um, that's the server uploaded. Let's power that on. Now let's put in some changes for the client. Let's see how that goes. So um, if client dot connected is false. Hey Sil, how's it going? Uh, good evening. Well, I presume it's nearly good night at this stage everywhere. Especially for my European buddies. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing here now is just basically checking if the client is connected, don't do anything, but if it's not, connect. So that should cover us. Uh, be interesting to see how many times the client connects, so I might actually throw in account for that too. Client connected. You'd be hoping it's one, uh, only one time, but I'm not 100% sure how that works. Um, yes. Uh, clients connect count. Okay, cool. Let's upload that. Ah yes, the intern and work. There's a 
there is the ramp up time where they're costing you time, but then hopefully they start uh, taking stuff off you, um, which is the ideal scenario. Um, yeah, good to hear that it's going good. Okay, done uploading. So let's take a look at our serial monitor. Um, maybe it's not looking at our serial monitor. Let's just reset. Oops. Did I upload? The wrong thing. Did I break the code? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. I've broken something by the looks of things because I'm just getting to hello. Oh, okay. There. Oh, yeah. I forgot I don't have anything. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know if you see this, but uh, we've went from. 13 times was it 15 without uh, comments uh, or without serial prints to 61,000 in 30 seconds um, yeah that seems uh, that seems a little bit faster okay uh, so great suggestion out of uh, Dave who's not called Dave on this he is called climber hunt uh, I, I hope that um I hope that's reflective to what actually is happening now. Um, yeah, <laughs> okay. So I, I think that's in a decent enough position where we can start, uh, we could start, I, I guess, testing how fast it is, like in reality, like I have a button here and I have an LED connected to the, to the server one. So we can see, um, we can see, uh, yes, that's, we stopped, we stopped, um, stopping the connection on the server side. So yeah, the, the changes we made to this, we, we made a couple on each side, but they were kind of, they were like linked to each other. We had, we had to make them on both. So in the server, we got rid of the client flush that could have been having an impact too. And we also stopped making it stop. Uh, so we commented out the client stop um, in the server. I, I can send you the, the, these files when we're finished as well, um, Sophie, so you don't need to take notes or anything. Um, and then the in the client, we added a check to see if the... Uh, so this is the client code, but it, it checked was its uh, client still connected. And if it wasn't, it would make a new connection. But if it was, it would just continue on using what it it had before. Um, yeah. So and that this was interesting as well. Like even though nothing actually told it to not dis or to disconnect at any stage, it did have to reconnect two hundred and ninety one times, um, which is funny. Um, because it's funny because like it didn't like when it was reconnecting all those other times before uh, it only connected 15 times but when we like it connected 291 times this time which is weird I thought but we'll see um, let's reset the board and uh, just see do we get similar <laughs> similar results, um, and then we can start adding the um, the button and stuff. Uh, so while we're waiting for that to run the test, uh, let's take a look at um, Wemos D one mini pinout because. Sophie's code is using ESP8266 pins, and I never use ESP8266 pins. I use uh, 
we most D1 mini pins. Um, so I, I would refer to this pin as D1, but in Sophie's code, it's GPIO5. So to be honest, to be more flexible, you probably are better off using GPIO pin five. Like isn't so if you just put in the number five uh, as your pin, that will be D1 here. Um, because that's flexible then if you're using just the standalone chip like Sophie is, or uh, say the Adafruit Feather Huzzah uses the GPIO pins as well, but the Wemos D1 Mini and uh, and the Node MCU boards use their own uh, numbering standard. Um, so that will be useful to have now in a minute. Um, Okie dokie. Yeah, so we got pretty much the same results, over 60,000 anyways. So that's in 30 seconds. So what it's doing, somebody do maths better than me. Uh, so in 30 into 60, it's doing 2,000 a second. Is that right? Seems high. Um, I don't know. 2000 and a, 2000 a second would be fast enough, I would imagine. Um, it would be interesting to see, have I broken anything, though? Like, is the server receiving things? Is the server receiving uh, this many things? But, uh, yeah. 0.5 milliseconds per loop. That's, that's very fast. The ESP is fast, though. Uh, I don't think it gets enough credit for that. Like, it gets credit for being, like, this Wi-Fi board, but, like, it is, like, what, a standard Arduino is, what, 16 megahertz, and an ESP is 80 megahertz? Uh, yes, I certainly can, Sophie, and let's do that. So I've got an LED hooked up here to pin D2. So let's uh, see how that works. Hey, Unexpected Maker. Uh, Unexpected Maker is from Australia, so uh, it's it's probably pretty early in the morning there, isn't it? The time zone switches with DST have impacted you doubly bad. Hey, the Schmick, how is it going? Um, yes, okay, so let's see. Digital right, uh, pin 12. So I guess I should connect my LED to uh, to one of these guys. Uh, what do I have it connected to? I have it connected to D2, which is GPIO pin 4. Okay. So let's connect to the equivalent one of that over on the other side. So you are doing your reading until Y, and then you're requesting the character at zero. Then you do a serial print of that, and then request four. Okay, you're not doing anything with request four at the moment. Um, no, it's it's two ESP eight two six sixes talking to each other. That's a Node MCU board. Um. Let me throw the link back in again. Um, Unexpected Maker. It's um, it's a project that Sophie in the chat is working on. Uh, I met her up at the unconference uh, on Saturday. It's uh, it it's uh, ESP eight two six six controlled uh, blimp. Uh, so she's going to attach a helium balloon to it, and it has a few motors and stuff. There's a few pictures on that. Uh, link um y yes there is there is we most branded esp32 boards uh the lowland one that i use is one one i had up at the unconference there is a we most branded board yes this makes more more sense to show under um yeah Seems pretty good. I I only that's the only uh, ESP thirty two board I have at the moment, so uh, I I can't really compare. I know some guys in the chat have mentioned uh, some of them. Um, the 
the ESP32 has so much more pins that the this form factor isn't the best um, for it. Now I know like Andres Spies was doing a, a video at the weekend where he used one that looks like this, but it has like the it has a double um, pins at each section, so it's not really breadboard friendly, but it's uh yeah, the the Wemo Slowlin 32 is the one that I currently have at the moment. Um what I would recommend uh doing rather than taking my recommendation for it is um if you search on YouTube for a guy called Andreas Spice, S P I E S S, he has a video comparing all the different dev boards and I can't remember what his recommendation was but he goes through a test of all of them the price the power consumption everything he does a really good job i'd really recommend checking that out um yes okay so let's see here so we are if request 12 is zero and that is one so we're going to enable request four Uh, perfect. Thank you, so. Um, and that is the link to his channel, the visitor. Um, okay, I'm just going to use one of these ones because they're here, I guess. So, uh, request 13 comes at the character that's at 12. I might actually spice. Yeah, I, I pronounced it like that, right? Somebody told me that uh, it was spike, but uh, it was lost in translation. That spice, spice, uh, translates to spike. Not that it's pronounced like that. Um, okay, what are, what am I doing here? <laughs> um, well, so we're. Printing out our client uh, So we want to so Val four, which is the one I'm connected to, right? I am connected to GPIO pin to the button I'm connected to D two. Um yep, so that is uh GPIO pin four. So that's the first one that gets written and then in the server it's the request for here so I should just be able to do uh, uh, there's a delay here do we need that hmm that's interesting uh, we'll, we'll leave it for the moment um, so yeah, I think it would be faster to use um would be faster to use um bits rather than uh sending characters across, but that's fine. Uh what do I want to do here if I know int uh LED state is equal to request four is equal to one and if that is true let's return hi 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 and if that is false let's return low so that's a uh, inline if statement is a tertiary statement i never remember the name of them but uh, basically, we're saying, let's make it a little bit more explicit. Um, we're saying if request four is equal equal to one, so if it's one, uh, return high, and then if it's not, return low. So that'll be our LED state. And then we're going to digital right to D2, uh, 
uh, LED state. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it was it was better than your pronunciation of uh, Sirsha. Actually, to be honest, I was surprised you, you did a good job <laughs> pronouncing Sirsha or pronouncing Sirsha. Pronouncing. Um, okay, so let's do a little swap around here. So I'm just gonna power that board. I'm not gonna power it yet. Well, I can. I can just click the reset button. Um, so I'm powering the client just off a regular power supply and I'm plugging the server into the computer because I need to uh, I need to um, upload this uh, and then we will see how it goes okay so I've got my com port all good Ugh. yeah Uh, it was funny, Dave, one of the projects that's been on my backlog for I don't know how long is uh, the kerosene oil tank monitoring. I was checking out your website there yesterday and you have it up there, uh, up the top. I didn't get a chance to actually read into detail on it, but it was like, oh, good, something to base it on. Uh, oh, that's very good, actually, yeah. Uh, I, that is a great question, Unexpected Maker. I haven't actually used OTA yet, and, like, I don't know why I haven't. I, I will soon, I promise. Um, but just, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> um, okay, so that's, does it work? No. Do I have my LED connected up right? I guess let's do some serial printing to see am um, I changing that. Okay, this will probably slow it down a bit, but that's okay. Yeah, I wonder is the client working faster than the server now? That'll be interesting to see. Um, especially because of this delay here. Like, maybe the client is running through all the stuff that's just failing to connect? I don't know. Yeah, I really must do it. I, like, one, one of the things that I would like to do with it, I think it'd be cool, like, OTA can pull down new versions from a server. I think it'd be cool to um, base it on GitHub releases so that, like, you know, if you had something that checked, hey, I'm a wh whatever, I'm, say, my alarm clock that I normally do on the streams, like, do I have a new version of this particular code? And if I do, like, prompt the user, do they want to install it or not? Um, I thought that might be kind of nice. All right, so that request there, we'll see... I'm gonna have a bazillion of these, but that's okay. I um, I didn't enjoy the sun off that I used the one time I used it. Um, like I always do, I bought the absolute cheapest one, and it was the same one that um. Uh, that that was shown in the home automation talk uh, on Saturday. It's just the basic sign off. I'm not sure where it is. Um, but the art wire is the problem with it. Um, like uh, I it was actually my first stream. I did uh, a sign off, and yeah, I <laughs> it didn't go great. But the art wire was like my biggest problem. I think. My serial monitor isn't showing up. Okay, it is now. Let's just reset that. Serial print request. Ah. 
we might be celebrating too early because this is the server and it's not printing anything which means it's not working like I should see connected a ton of times huh well, isn't that interesting? What did we break? Um, what happens if you're not connected? Nothing. Yes. So yeah, I guess the next thing is to check yeah, where is this failing? Client server dot available gives you a Wi Fi client. Oh, but I know, I know what's wrong. <laughs> um, I'm not sending anything from the the client because the client stops after 30 seconds. I don't know if you can see that. Let's uh, uh, desk plus me. Okay, let's uh, reset this board again. Let's see if I can get you a little bit closer the action. Uh, I probably should have thought about, oh my god, the serial monitor is just going berserk here. Um, okay, so I'm going to reset this board and I want you to see, so it seems to be inversely uh, working at the moment, so when I press the button it turns off the light, but let's see how it goes. So I'm resetting, All right. it's not doing anything there. I don't know exactly how fast it is, but it's definitely less than a second. It's it, it's actually working pretty good, I would say. Like this is definitely controllable. Um, and it stopped now because this has stopped uh, sending data. So I would say that that is a bit of a success. Um, yeah, I, I would say so. We we can actually we could find that out. Um, but uh, yeah, I I don't even know if we need to find that out because it. Um, uh, I don't even know if we need to find that out because it's clearly like okay for the <laughs> for the um, purpose that it's needed for. If you did want to do it again, no problem. <laughs> uh, I think there's a... If anybody uses Twitch, you could clip this stuff. Um, normally clip uh, highlights of games or whatever if somebody does a cool kill or something. I don't really understand Twitch too much, but uh, yeah, so it's it's good. <laughs> um no you can change you can change Alexa to um you can change Alexa to Amazon or Echo. I don't think you can uh <laughs> Thanks for uh thanks for joining Dev. I I had been streaming on YouTube uh up till quite recently. I think this is my third week on Twitch or is it just my first actually? Se sorry, second. I think it could be my second, but um, I uh, I got signed up for the Twitch affiliate program, which actually stops me from streaming on YouTube at the same time. I used to stream on both, um, but uh, yeah, so I just signed up to Twitch. I said I'd give it a go. Um, oh no, unexpected baker. These are going to be tiny. Um, uh. Sophie did a good job of explaining it on Saturday. Like, these things will be way too light to go outside. They're... 
what were the 15 grams or something? Wasn't that the target weight or was it? No, it was more than 15 grams. 15 grams is tiny. But I don't know what it, what it is. Uh, screen share. I think there's a picture of it, isn't there? Yeah, there's the first one. What is the unit of measurement? That is grams. Yeah, it was 15. Yeah, 15 grams. Wow, that is super light. Um, yeah, so what she wants to do is uh, make an obstacle course out of them. Um, board and battery was 14.8. This is an old picture. Uh, there's the updated one. <laughs> 14.6 grams and the uh, little uh, normally people with those kind of weighing scales it's for like narcotics or whatever um no i don't think anybody was recording at the unconference um which is uh oh sorry <laughs> yeah it would help if you could see the picture um yeah um yeah, I, I think as they were saying on the day, they're encouraging people to upload their stuff to um, Hackaday.io. So, uh, like, hopefully some of the talks or whatever will uh, come out from that. Um, yeah, I actually think that that is not too bad at all. There's probably some more little improvements. I might actually just take a look at the... Um, moving from uh, sending individual characters to sending one. Um, I don't think it's going to make a significant difference, but uh, I guess I have like another half an hour <laughs> to do something, so I might as well do that. Um, yeah, although I am pretty tired, but that's fine. Um, I also just haven't used uh, Arduino bit set or bit read before, so I was taking a quick look at that. I knew there was a way to do it. So what I'm thinking here is that you... So X is the numeric variable you want to set. So you just give it a int, I guess, and then in which bit to set, starting at zero for the least significant rightmost bit. So uh, we can do that. Yep, that's what we are talking about. Uh, I can't see that color. Who's that? Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for joining, Dev. Really appreciate it. Um, uh, good night. Uh, okay. Yeah. So let's try this bit set out and see does it uh, make it better or worse. Um, okay. So again. <laughs> Let's swap the clients and the servers around. I, I probably could have just plugged both of them into the computer. I just haven't ever done that before. Um, yeah. The curse of the USB. I've turned it around uh, three times now. That's when you know you'll get it right. Um. Yeah, uh, okay. Did you have a good night on uh, Saturday, Sophie? I was, uh, I, I had to drive home, so I was, wasn't able to stay around, really. Um, okay, so I guess what I just do here is... I wonder is masks any faster than bit set I wonder it's probably doing the same thing is it uh, yeah so my original plan was to use bit masks but I thought bit set would be a bit cleaner if nothing else um, yeah Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to try bit set anyways, but thank you for the suggestion. 
unexpected maker. I'm pretty sure that was my first time in Temple Bar. It definitely was my first time in Temple Bar at night. It was insane. Like, walking back to my car at 9 o'clock, I was like, this is, like, what you would see at 1 o'clock in the morning somewhere. <laughs> but, uh... Uh, yeah, cool. Um, isn't it just wrapped in a function? Probably. Uh, okay, so we'll call this, um, I don't know, data, because I can't think of anything better to call it. Um, right, so that should give us a zero, zeroed out array, and we're going to use our, um, what we were looking at before there, so... Are we? Yes. If if digital read four, then we'll do bit set data zero. Yeah, you were saying that before. Um, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy there. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I have to say about the subject. Uh, insane. Five, one, what was the next one? 12, 12, two, 13, three, 14. Four and so I have a sixteen then. Oh, I could only imagine what that place is like on St. Patrick's Day. Like it's I'd say it is just a uh, absolute mess. Like it was pretty messy. The beer is really expensive there. Like people were telling me it was like twelve euro a pint or something. I was like, wow. It, I, I wouldn't be the best person to ask because as I've mentioned before I don't drink but like a pint is about five euro in a standard place maybe not in Dublin but give or take there's a lot of tax on our uh, alcohol in Ireland um, yeah so that should be enough bits so then I can just client print uh, Yeah, I, I think I, I think I'll just do a print as well. So um, I'm not sure if you're still there, Sophie. But like, I think the reason I'm not sure if you knew this, maybe you did. The reason that you needed to increase the characters at here for one each time is because you were doing a print lin. It was adding the return characters, which was so zero would have been the one you wanted, and then one and two were the return characters. Uh, thanks for the follow, Raz guy. Or I, I didn't see who that was. Ooh, I dropped seventy six frames. I think when <laughs> the thing popped up, it struggled. I need to get a new computer or overclock it, one or the other. Hey, thank you, I giggles for the sub. Really appreciate it. Um, it's a nice little doggy paddling as well. Um. Yeah, so I think that's why they're there like that. So we can probably get rid of them. So I'm going to need to plug back in the server <laughs> too. Um, but let's get this client working first. So we're doing all our digital reads, 16. Yeah. So I think we can get rid of all of this and just do a client print data and let's comment uh, put that back in the way it was yeah I think it's the printlin anyways I, I think if you just did a client that print you wouldn't have to add the characters but it is it a slash n I can never remember uh, and because we're only going to send one byte of data uh, I'm gonna get rid of the the y one as well so you know when the client is available the server will just read the next available one to it as instead of reading up to y so 
again, I I think you might gain like milliseconds if anything noticeable by doing this sort of stuff, but uh, I guess why not? <laughs> it's a bit of fun. Uh, so let's program that up to the board. Um, yes. I don't know what is up with Java today. He's uh, he's not behaving. Um, unstable. Unstable while I program. Maybe I just shouldn't say much while I'm programming. No, it's, speech is fine. I just shouldn't move around much. Um, yeah, that's disappointing <laughs> that I can't keep up with the Arduino. Uh, right, so that's done uploading. So let's switch these around again. Remind me to reset that uh, when we actually come time to using it. Um, okay, so now we're looking at the server. And uh, I I think I just what is the available things to me <laughs> Arduino client. Let me bring you on my journey. Uh, uh, there should be more. Is it just read? Reads the next byte received. Okay. Is it still frozen, Gary? Let me just switch around. Encoding overloaded. Hmm, that's not good. Okay. Uh, Twitch, what are you telling me? Is it back now? This is disappointing. Um, yeah, let me know if it's back up. If it's not, I will lower the settings for the encoder again. Okay, let me lower the settings for the encoder. <laughs> uh, two seconds, I can't do it while I'm live, so I need to <laughs> when I stopped it. Okay. I noticed that I was using my CPU for encoding, uh, and it was possible for me to use my uh, my video card, so I've done that now. So hopefully it's okay. Uh, yeah, if you could let me know how it is, that would be uh, good. Sorry about that. While we're waiting, I'll uh, I'll start doing some stuff around here. So I think I just need to do a client read. Uh, it. What does it mean, Gary? <laughs> or my giggles? Uh, yeah, hopefully it's okay now. It's not complaining to me anymore. Um, Okay, great. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. I'll have that set the next time <laughs> for uh, for future reference. Um, okay, so client read is going to give me a byte back, right? Uh, Arduino, oops. Arduino client read returns a byte. Yeah. Uh, right, you know. Okay, so I guess it will be a byte request, and now can I? Uh, I want to do a so client read should return me a byte, and now I can do bit bit read to uh 
to uh, get out the different numbers. So uh, the yes, um, okay. So that gives me my request. I don't need to print that out anymore. Um, request for and all these things are strings. Uh, this presumably returns a number, the value of the bit, zero or one. Um, okay, so we probably don't need to read them like this anymore. Uh, why don't I do this the easy way? Um, So what I can do now instead is uh, I can just do this and I'll leave my thing here to double check that it's working. So bit read, the number is request and it was four, which was the first one. So if I do a zero, that should work and then I think we I wonder it's probably I think that will return true right if it's zero it will return false and if it's one it will return true I think that should work um, I still have all these to change. I'm kind of toying behind the idea of um, whether I should read them all in. I probably should, and then I'll just have them. So, bool request for. Oh, I need to. I'm just going to call it rec for. Uh, right, that should work for me if I'm not mistaken. Oops. My left hand is faster than my right hand, apparently. Uh, rank 5, 12, thir 13, 14, 16, and then this is just 1, 2, three, four, five. Okay, so that means we can just go straight in here. Rec four, and then I should just be able to do this now. Uh, okay, so we need to do this a little bit differently. If request 12 is zero, Okay, so we can just change that to if rec 12 is not set and rec 13 is set to do that, else do that. If rec 12 is true and rec 13 is false. Request 13 is on. We we can save ourselves a uh, right here as well. So at the moment, what it's doing here is if request 12 is not set and request 13 is set, it's doing a digital write, else it writes both of them low. But then it does another check on the same two pins. Um, uh, like a different state of the same two pins. But then if that's false, it sets the two of them low. So it would 
like say for the example here it would get here wouldn't be true so it'd set these two pins to be off and then immediately set them change them again so what we can actually just do is this and in fact I think you might even be able to make your digital rights based on rec uh, 12 and 13 themselves they seem to be the inverse of them uh, I don't know what happens if both 12 and 13 are pressed maybe that's not possible um, but yeah that at least will be a little bit better I I'm gonna leave a note here I think you could do uh, let me add in a few lines um, digital right 12 not rec 12 so it seems to be the inverse um, All of the above logic. Um, so that will, that'll need to be repeated down here, but it's fine. Okay, my dogs just started barking. <laughs> oh yeah, my wife went to the shop, so she's obviously back. Huh? Um, okay, so let's upload that to our server and see how we get on. Hopefully it works. <laughs> Probably should have saved off what I had before, but it's fine. We can control Z. And also, I have a stream of it too, so. <laughs> the joys of having a husky, or huskies. I don't know if you can hear them. They sound pretty loud to me. Okay, um, done uploading, so let's reset this. Hmm. I know I'm not showing you my stuff at the moment, but that's uh, nearly a good thing. I've broken it. I wonder what I broke. It's not working anyways. Let's print out what comes in here. But I guess I need to print it out as binary. Print byte as Binary Arduino. I can pass in a formatter, right? It's a uh, dash bin. And let's upload that and see what's happening here. Maybe it's just happening so fast that it's just turning on and off. I don't think that's what's happening though. <laughs> Maybe I am making a mistake in my client somewhere. Digital reading, all these values that I don't need to do anymore. Uh, I do a client print yeah that looks okay server okay let's open up the serial monitor uh, let's reset this oops It's just sending ones all the time. All ones all the time. Okay, so I've broken the client. By the looks of things. How have I done that now? Okay, so it's stop, stop sending stuff. It's just all... 
It's just eight ones. Uh, what does the client think it's sending? <laughs> Maybe I need to do a clear on this first. Let's see. Um, At least there's still communication between the two of them, but it's just not right anymore. Wait, what's the point? It's Java is having a nightmare. How is your, uh, how's your hack like heck going, uh, Dave? You were saying you were joined fifth, uh, the last update I seen. Um, that's nothing to be, uh, nothing to be ashamed of at all. Um, it's good going. Like, I presume what's gonna end up happening is the person who has the biggest, uh, following on social media is going to uh is going to do the best it seems like oh fifth but not shared anymore ooh nice <laughs> Sixty-three, 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 sixty-three. oh yeah i haven't done this as been 63 is a pretty round number. Maybe do, do Dev, post the link. Uh, maybe I need to clear out the bit set. Uh, I should make it a byte anyway, that's not probably how the white. Arduino byte. Arduino bit. Uh, bit clear. What's that do? Writes a zero to a bit of a numeric value. Okay. Okay. Kind flush. Well, I don't think that's the problem. It seems to be sending. Um, oops, <laughs> that's definitely not what I want to do. Uh, it seems to be sending 63, which is all ones in binary. Isn't it? You think I'd know? I was saying to uh, I was saying to Dave on Twitter. I just love the part with his mom so much. <laughs> I laughed out loud at it. But everybody, Dave Bloger, go watch the film, and more importantly than watch the film. Uh, vote and share and stuff. So, uh, good luck with that, Dave. When does it finish up? Um, yes, let's see what this is doing now. So it's all ones. Okay, so it is, this is changing. Ah, yes, these are all pulled up. Well, 16 isn't pulled up, but uh, there's their Friday. They've changed some dates. 
Yeah, they're all pulled up, so it makes sense that they're all high to begin with. Okay. So now let's but it's not changing my LED, right? It is not changing my LED. We might be swapping it back to, oh, did it change now? We might be swapping it back to what we had. Because <laughs> at least that worked. Digital right if request for maybe this isn't working right. Bit read request it's returning a swap around again. So I can see what the server is sending. Yeah, I'll just spend another couple of minutes on this, and if it doesn't work, we'll just bring it back to what it was. Um, Serial monitor is stuck. Okay, connected. It's still all ones here. So, not looking good. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just put back what it was. Uh, I'll leave that stuff commented out. I even what was there before worked fine, so maybe I won't even. Um, that. Ugh, did I? No, I replaced all your code. Maybe I might download a fresh batch of your code uh, and fix it up from there. That might make sense. Uh, let's open in Atom. So it doesn't uh, interfere. With our Arduino IDE, uh, yes, sure. Do whatever you want, Adam. Uh, okay. Uh, we just don't want the client flush or the client stop everything else should be the same as that yeah I don't know what's wrong with that and it also doesn't matter so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't worry about it how much of it did I copy did I copy the commented out stuff no I should have but I didn't String request. Okay, we're just gonna not copy the commented out stuff. Uh oh yeah, I just didn't get the bit reading thing working at all. I don't know why it's just reading it's just reading ones all the time, I'm guessing. This is probably the problem, but I'm gonna finish up now anyway. So Atom is just a clean version of Sophie's code. So I'm just gonna put back what was there before? Um, including that. Yeah, so I can finish up by actually giving a working version to Sophie rather than the mess that I'm currently leaving her. Um, Okie dokie. That's that, <laughs> and 
client. Let's look at blimp client and I'll pull down a, I think I might have left blimp client in an easier to recover position. Yeah, blimp client is much easier to recover. We can just get rid of all of this. what it is in byte notation uh, yes it is uh, all ones eight ones in by bi in binary notation and it was it looked correct on the client side as in like it it changed when I pressed the button so I'm not sure exactly what was happening but yeah uh, <laughs> I've moved on past it <laughs> anyways um, one thing actually Sophie that uh, might be useful as well is you can you could move all the serial prints that don't need to be beside each other so just for debugging purposes if you want to enable serial you could have them all down in one thing and uh, and have an if statement around that like and maybe set something or a hash define to say enable debugging or whatever but uh, again doesn't seem to make a huge amount of difference uh, do you want me to get rid of the show count stuff as well while we're at it uh, we don't need that anymore either. Let's look after. Yeah, sure. I'll leave you with what I think is a working version of. Okay, cool. Yep, I'll leave all that stuff there. So yeah, let's test that that out. So this is plugged into the server. So let's plug the server in and program that up. Not sure if the fifty is needed. Um, I don't know, Greg. I, I thought Twitch message or sent an email. That's disappointing that it doesn't. Um, do you use Twitter uh, at all, Greg? Because I would kind of post out that it's like a stream is coming live or whatever. At least I try to. I'm not always the best at it, if I'm being completely honest. Um, yeah, I was trying to think as well, like, uh, is there any other way that I could notify people? Um, and I didn't know. <laughs> like, bar getting, like, people's emails or something, but I've, you know, thought that that might be kind of weird uh, for, uh, for ye, if I was compiling people's emails. So I could sell them to Facebook. Um, no. I just thought you were missing Greg because it was early in the morning. <laughs> if I'm being honest. I was like, uh, it's getting early for those uh, down under down under guys. Is New Zealand counted as down under? Like, you call, say going to Australia is going down under, but like New Zealand is just as down under, but I don't feel like you'd say that for New Zealand. Um, okay, let's see, serial monitor. Let's see how this goes. Uh... Yeah, I think, yeah, so that's, that's back to being the 61,000 or whatever. So let's just test that the button works again. Um, ugh, get out of the way, hand. No, the button's not working. Oh, sorry, the button was uh, something I had I had put into the server so yeah it makes sense that the button's not working um, 
right? Because at the moment the server has the pin that the button is connected to commented out, but let me just connect into pin. I'd have to change the LED and the button. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's back to sending the 61,000 anyways. And if there's any issues with it, Sophie, you can just give me a shout. I can take a quick look at it again. There's no problems with that. Ooh, look at that, only 57,000. How, how disappointing. Let's try again, then. Um, yeah, if... Uh, if you're on Twitter, Greg, I think it's the best way. But t I guess tweets aren't exactly. Uh, I guess tweets aren't exactly to um, like push notification e. Like YouTube did do a pretty good job at like saying I was live. If you don't have the Twitch app on your phone, maybe try that. That might be a good way of doing it. I don't, if anybody has a better way of notifying people or just a good different way, uh, please let me know. I'd be absolutely happy to do whatever. Um, yeah, so I think that that is it. Um, Sophie, I'll send you on these files via email. Um, yeah. <laughs> That is the problem, all right, with Twitter. Um, yeah, Sophie will send you on these files. Uh, make sure to, if you're interested in this project, I know I wasn't doing anything too, um, too uh, interesting with it, um, but uh, definitely check out Sophie's Hackaday page. You can follow the project and like the project and do whatever else you do on Hackaday.io. Um, yeah, I'm sure she'll be posting updates to it as things go on, but, uh, yeah, hopefully that has, uh, sped up her latency. You are very welcome, Sophie. Um, that is, uh, thank you for at least helping organize Saturday. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the breakdown was, but, um, yeah, that was, uh, great day, so... Uh, very happy to help. Uh, does Sophie have a Twitter account? Yes, she does. Uh, I can put a link to it here. Here is Sophie's Twitter account. Make sure you don't say anything bad about Hackaday to her though, because uh, although technically she doesn't work for Hackaday, but uh, close enough. <laughs> she works for their parent company. Um, okay, yeah, cool. Uh, that's it. Um, thanks a lot for joining, everybody. Appreciate it. Um, good luck with the rest of the project, Sophie. Um, keep us updated. Okay, thanks, guys. I will see you next time. Next Monday, I guess, is the next time or uh, Saturday morning for beginner's breakfast. Good night, Mike. Uh, yeah, I will see you, everybody. Bye-bye.